Well, hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Reptile News. Now we're going to start off today in Florida where apparently Florida Park Service, and you know I love talking about this kind of stuff, anything that really helps us while we're out in the wild looking for snakes, whether we're photographing them or whether we uh, hold the proper permit for our location to collect them, whatever we like to do, stuff that helps us while we're out there. I love talking about it. And the Florida Park Service has apparently developed an app to help people plan trips to Florida State Parks. Apparently some of the uh, features of this app are GPS mapping as well as an alert in case of emergencies. And I'm not 100% sure what kind of alert this is, whether you get lost out in the Everglades or something and you can just hit a button to, uh, you know, a panic button to alert authorities. I can see where that can go way wrong, but I, I haven't downloaded the app yet. It's available on Android and the iPhone. It's free. I do plan on downloading it even though I'm nowhere near Florida just to kind of check it out and see what they've done here. Now we're going to move on to Brunswick where I ran across this little story that was really interesting and it's something that I greatly lacked detail and information but it was something I always really wondered. See we're going through a very mild I guess to say the least winter. We've had temperatures up here in California in the 60s close to 70s when it's I mean it's supposed to be freezing right now and they're saying that these warm winters are confusing reptiles. Reptiles are coming out in the sun uh, during a time of the year when they really need to uh, save their energy up for uh, spring and, and, and breeding and everything. And like I said, greatly uh, lacking detail and information, but I'd really love to hear what you guys think. Leave a text comment or a video response. And now we're going to move on to our top story of the day, and that is right back in Florida. And yes, the Python Challenge, apparently 68 snakes were captured altogether, which is the final count. Um, but what really, really bothers me, and I think bothers a lot of people, there's really two sides to this story, and I can see them both, but that doesn't uh, trouble me any less. Uh, they released, they apparently planted two transmitters in three different snakes, two transmitters per snakes, and released these large male pythons back out uh, into the wild in Florida. Yes, these snakes that they awarded people to bring in. Their apparent reasonings are that by being able to track these snakes, they could potentially lead them to breeding females during the breeding season and they can potentially capture these females and uh, not let them give birth out into the wild which I guess from a like a native conservation standpoint is a really good idea to find a way to, to capture these females and get them out of the wild and, and disrupt the breeding cycle of these animals but at the same time why would you release an invasive species that part just it, it, it bothers me I mean I do agree that this is money much better spent than legislation banning reptiles but it, it's just it, I just don't understand why you would pay somebody to capture some snakes that were invasive to insert radio transmitters in them and then release them back out in the wild it seems like there should be a better way than that to do it I mean after all we are talking about a state that holds up to a hundred thousand as some estimates go invasive pythons so why so hard to find the breeding female but that of course is anybody's best guess and that has been all your news for this Tuesday if you'd like to read any more about these stories that links right down below here in the description and as always if you're still watching my name is Jason White now you know what's going on in the reptile world be good to each other and we'll see you next time <laughs>